I challenged myself to recreate a 3D render that I made a few years back, but this time purely in After Effects, and this is how it turned out. So I'm going to break down my workflow and exactly how I achieved the final result. I started by using my old render as reference to draw out a rough version of the track that the cylinder would animate on, and when I say rough I mean it needs a lot of work. Once I had this I moved on to creating the main cylinder. Using shape layers and merge paths I created the base of my main moving object, but again it was looking quite rough, however at this point it really didn't matter. I ended up splitting the 4 3D layer out and parenting it to the main and original cylinder layer to give me a bit more control with the paths and have the merge paths working properly. There was lots of tweaking and there was probably an easy way to do this, but I often find I make things hard for myself. It was time to revisit the track so I fleshed out the shape a little more and got some fills added in. I then created a second 4 3D layer for the track to give it some depth. Next was the star of the show, the animation. I created a rough path that my cylinder would animate on and copied this to my cylinder's positional data. I then tweaked this and changed the layer order around to make it look as though the cylinder was travelling across the track. I then had to work on the easing and get the feel of the motion right. It was important to make sure that the cylinder never had a stopping point and it was always on the move. This would give it the feel of real momentum and that it was always stuck in a loop. This was probably the hardest part of the animation as I'd already spent the whole day working in After Effects. I kept switching between the value graph and the speed graph as my brain felt like it was melting and I just couldn't make sense of anything. Honestly at this point I was so tempted to close After Effects and give up and call it a day. But being a motion designer is all about problem solving and just figuring out how to get to your desired outcome. So I kept at it, I knew if I could just get these curves right the rest would fall into place. After more switching and trying to get my brain to function, I kind of got something working, but it still needed work. I ended up deleting some keyframes which made it much easier to work with, then it was just tweaking the speed graph a little more and getting the movement feeling right. Often animation is just a trial and error process, and the more you progress the more you'll have an eye for understanding what looks right and what looks wrong and what needs tweaking here and there. Now we had the base, it was time to get the loop working, where I ran into more issues. Now realistically it's much easier to plan things than jump straight in like I did. This way you can get things planned out and break down how things need to work mathematically. The first part of the loop was to add some camera movement, so I created a null and parented all my layers to it, and that will be my camera movement. This is where I decided that my actual track was not very even. So I ended up changing this to a wave warp stroke layer, which I then pre-comped to pin its position, so it would follow along with the camera. I then realigned it all and double checked which parts of my loop needed attention by soloing and going through the layers one by one to look out for where the errors were. I noticed the 4 3D layer on my track was out, so recreated one path and then used a repeater to keep this sustained throughout. Really, I should have done this at the start, but don't work when your brain's kind of melted. Then it was time to just add the centre ball to the cylinder, this was pretty straightforward, and just required me to set my anchor point to the centre of the cylinder, add some rotation and fix my curves. After some more curve tweaking, I hopped onto Adobe Colour for some colour inspiration, and then began to make it look nice. I noticed the bottom of my track was missing, so I added this in as well, just by duplicating the top 4 3D layer, adding some rotation and reversing the scale, and then I just tweaked the path and made it a slightly darker colour. When I was kind of happy with how it was looking, I began to add some layer styles to really help bring it to life with the help of Ben Marriott, using his layer styles video as a base guide before tweaking it some more. I still wasn't completely sold on the colour scheme, so I adjusted it some more until I found something that I liked. Then to finish off, I animated the rotation of my layer style on the inner ball to make it look like the light was consistent, and then just added a contact shadow for some extra realism. It's impressive how much some layer styles can really make a difference to the overall look, but it's always the extra 10% that really takes your work up a notch. If you want to learn more about After Effects, you can watch this video here. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.